The Indian Massacre of 1622 took place in the English colony of Virginia, in what now belongs to the United States, on Friday the 22nd of March 1622. Captain John Smith, though he had not been in Virginia since 1609 and was not a first-hand eyewitness, related in his History of Virginia that braves of the Powhatan Confederacy came unarmed into our houses with dare, turkeys, fish, fruits, and other provisions to sell us. The Powhatan grabbed any tools or weapons available and killed all English settlers they found, including men, women and children of all ages. Chief A.P. Shonsenor led a coordinated series of surprise attacks by the Powhatan Confederacy that killed 347 people, a quarter of the English population of Jamestown. Jamestown, founded in 1607, was the site of the first successful English settlement in North America, and was then the capital of the colony of Virginia. Its tobacco economy led to constant expansion and seizure of Powhatan lands, which ultimately provoked a violent reaction. Although Jamestown was spared due to a timely last-minute warning, the Powhatan also attacked and destroyed many smaller settlements along the James River. In addition to killing settlers, the Powhatan burned houses and crops. The English abandoned many of the smaller settlements after the attacks. Background at first, the natives were glad to trade provisions to the colonists for metal tools, but by 1609 the English governor, John Smith, had begun to send in raiding parties to demand food. This earned the colonists a bad reputation among the Native Americans and precipitated conflict. They isolated the Native Americans, burned down houses, and stole their food supplies. The English violence alienated the natives further and they laid siege to the Jamestown fort for several months. Unable to secure more food supplies, many colonists died during the starving time in 1609-10. The London Company's primary concern was the survival of the colony. In England's best interest, the colonists would have to maintain civil relations with the Powhatan. The Powhatan and the English realized that they could benefit from each other through trade once peace was restored. In exchange for food, the chief asked the colonists to provide him with metal hatchets and copper. Unlike John Smith, other early leaders of Virginia such as Thomas Dale and Thomas Gates based their actions on different thinking, as they were military men and saw the Powhatan as essentially a military problem. The Powhatan had soon realized that the Englishmen did not settle in Jamestown to trade with them. The English wanted more, they wanted control over the land. As Chief Powhatan said, your coming is not for trade but to invade my people and possess my country. Having seen the death of all my people thrice, I know the difference of peace and where better than any other country. If he fought the English, Powhatan predicted, he would be so haunted by Smith that he can neither rest eat nor sleep. But his tired men must watch, and if a twig but break, every one cry, there comes Captain John Smith, then he must fly he know not whether and thus with miserable fear end his miserable life in 1610 the London Company instructed Gates, the newly appointed colonial governor, to Christianize the natives and absorb them into the colony. As for Chief Powhatan, Gates was told, if you find it not best to make him your prisoner yet you must make him your tributary, and all the other his way rowances, subordinate chiefs, about him first to acknowledge no other lord but King James. When Gates arrived at Jamestown in 1610, he decided to evacuate the settlement because he thought the government's plan was not feasible, as the colonists were about to leave the bay and head out into the open sea, they were met by the incoming fleet of Lord de la War. Taking command as governor, de la War ordered the fort reoccupied. He plotted conquest of the surrounding tribes. In July 1610 he sent Gates against the Kekatan. Gates lured the Indians into the open by means of music and dance act by his drummer, and then slaughtered them. This was the first Anglo-Powhatan War. The English, led by Samuel Argyll, captured Pocahontas, daughter of Powhatan, and held her hostage until he would agree to their demands. 
English demanded that all Powhatan captives be released, return all English weapons taken by his warriors, and agree upon a lasting peace. It was while Pocahontas was held by the English that she met John Rolfe, whom she later married. While in captivity, Pocahontas was taught the English language, manners and religion. She was baptized as a Christian and took the name Rebecca. Rolfe wrote that the way to maintain peace between the Powhatan and the English was to marry Pocahontas, not with the unbridled desire of carnal affection but for the good of the colony and the glory of God. Such a marriage might bring peace between the warring English and Powhatan, just as it would satisfy Pocahontas's desire after they married. There were more peaceful relations for a time between the English colonists and the Powhatan Confederacy. Edward Waterhouse, secretary of the Virginia Company, wrote, S.U.C.H. was the conceit of firmer peace and amity, as that there was seldomer or never a sword worn, and a peace, firearm, seldomer, except for a deer or fowl. The plantations of particular adventurers and planters were placed scatteringly and stragglingly as a choice vein of rich ground invited them, and the further from neighbors held the better. The houses generally set open to the savages, who were all wise friendly entertained at the tables of the English, and commonly lodged in their bedchambers. In 1618, after the death of Powhatan, his brother Apishon Senor became paramount chief of the Confederacy. Apishon Senor did not believe peaceful relations with the colonists could be maintained. Having recovered from his defeat commanding Pamunkey warriors during the First Anglo-Powhatan War, he planned to shock the English with an attack that would leave them contained in a small trading outpost, rather than expanding throughout the area with new plantations. In the spring of 1622, after a settler murdered his advisor Nematanu, Apishon Senor launched a campaign of surprise attacks on at least 31 separate English settlements and plantations, mostly along the James River, extending as far as Henricus. Jamestown forewarned. Jamestown was saved by the warning of an Indian youth living in the home of one of the colonists, Richard Pace. The Indian woke Pace and told him of the planned attack. Living across the river from Jamestown, Pace secured his family and rode to the settlement to spread the alarm. Jamestown increased its defenses. The name of the Indian who warned Pace is not recorded in any of the contemporary accounts. Although legend has named him Chanko, this may be a misidentification. An Indian named Chorso is mentioned in a letter from the Virginia Council to the Virginia Company of London dated April 4, 1623. He is described not as a youth but as one dot who had lived much amongst the English and by revealing a YT place oat to divers VPPO in the day of massacre soured their lives. Chorso may be the same person as Chakro, an Indian mentioned in a court record of 25 October 1624 as living with L.T. Sharp, Captain William Powell, and Captain William Pierce, in the time of Sir Thorsdale's government, that is, before 1616. It is possible that the older Indian, Chorso, and the youth who warned Richard Pace, have been conflated. Destruction of other settlements. During the one-day surprise attack the Powhatan tribes attacked many of the smaller communities, including Henricus and its fledgling college for children of natives and settlers alike. At Martin's Hundred, they killed more than half the population of Wolston hometown, where only two houses and a part of a church were left standing. In all, the Powhatan killed about 400 colonists and took 20 women captive. The captives lived and worked as Powhatan Indians until their deaths or ransom. The settlers abandoned the Falling Creek Ironworks, Henricus and Smith's Hundred. Date of the attack Julian calendar dates under the Julian calendar, by which England and its colonies were still operating. New Year's Day fell on March 25. The attack took place on March 22, 1621 as reckoned by the colonists, three days before New Year's Day 1622. Historians, genealogists, 
and others who work with dates in this era commonly denote Julian calendar dates in the interval between January 1st and March 24th with the old style suffix when presenting these dates with their original year value, or to use a mixed style date syntax which combines original and adjusted values. For example, the date of the attack on Jamestown can be denoted as March 22, 1621, or March 22, 1621, 20 seconds. The common practice of showing the date as March 22, 1622 is technically inaccurate, but less confusing for those who are unfamiliar with the differences in calendaring systems. The Good Friday fallacy recent accounts of the attack frequently note that it took place on Good Friday. This is incorrect. No contemporary accounts of the attack mention Good Friday, but rather, on the Friday morning the 22 of March, March 22, 1622 was a Friday. Good Friday that year fell on April 19th, nearly a month after the attack. The idea that the attack fell on Good Friday seems to have originated years later. As part of my making, it was erroneously noted so frequently as to be accepted as conventional wisdom. It is demonstrably incorrect. Aftermath, a Pichon withdrew his warriors, believing that the English would behave as Native Americans would when defeated, pack up and leave, or learn their lesson and respect the power of the Powhatan. Following the event, a Pichon Senor told the Patawimic, who were not part of the Confederacy and had remained neutral, that he expected, before the end of two moons there should not be an Englishman in all their countries. He misunderstood the English colonists and their backers overseas. The surviving English settlers were in shock after the attacks. As they began to recover, the men worked on a plan of action. By unanimous decision both the council and planters it was agreed to draw people together into fewer settlements, for better defense. The colony intended to gather men together to plan attack, but this was difficult because of the survivors. Two-thirds were said to have been women and children and men who were unable to work or to go against the Indians. In England when the massacre occurred, John Smith believed that the settlers would not leave their plantations to defend the colony. He planned to return with a ship filled with soldiers, sailors, and ammunition, to establish a running army able to fight the Powhatan. Smith's goal was to enforce the salvages to leave their country or bring them in the fear of subjection that every man should follow their business securely, but Smith never returned to Virginia. The English took revenge against the Powhatan by the use of force, surprise attacks, famine resulting from the burning of their corn, destroying their boats, canoes, and houses, breaking their fishing weirs and assaulting them in their hunting expedition, pursuing them with horses and using bloodhounds to find them and mastiffs to seize them, driving them to flee within reach of their enemies among other tribes, and assimilating and abetting their enemies against them. Them. The 1622 massacre was used as a justification for ongoing seizure of Powhatan land by the colonists for the next 10 years. Historian Betty Wood writes, What is usually referred to as the Massacre of 1622, the Native American attack that resulted in the death of 347 English settlers and almost wiped out Jamestown gave the colonists the excuse they needed to take even more of what they wanted from the indigenous population of the Chesapeake. As far as the survivors of the massacre of 1622 were concerned, by virtue of launching this unprovoked assault Native Americans had forfeited any legal and moral rights they might previously have claimed to the ownership of the land they occupied. Wood quotes a Virginian settler, We, who hitherto have had possession of no more ground than their waste and our purchase at a valuable consideration to their own contentment, may now by right of war and law of nations invade the country and those who sought to destroy us, whereby we shall enjoy their cultivated places. Indian Poisoning Colonists who survived the attacks raided the tribes and particularly their corn crops in the summer and fall of 1622 were so successful that Chief Apishon Senor decided to negotiate 
Through friendly native intermediaries, a peace parley was arranged between the two groups. Some of the Jamestown leaders, led by Captain William Tucker and Dr. John Potts, poisoned the Pofartans' share of the liquor for the parley's ceremonial toast. The poison incapacitated the Pofartans and about 200 were killed. Chief Apishonsen or escaped. Indian decline and defeat. In 1624 Virginia was made a royal colony of England. This meant that the Crown took direct authority rather than allowing guidance by the Virginia Company of London. The Crown could exercise its patronage for royal favourites. Settlers continued to encroach on land of the Powhatan tribes, and the colony tended to change or ignore agreements with the natives when no longer in the colony's interest. The tribes had increasing frustration with the settlers. The next major confrontation with the Powhatan Confederacy occurred in 1644, resulting in the deaths of about 500 colonists. While similar to the death toll in 1622, the loss a generation later represented less than 10% of the population, and had far less impact upon the colony. This time, the elder Apishon Senor, who was being transported by litter, was captured by the colonists. Imprisoned at Jamestown, he was killed by one of his guards. His execution marked the beginning of the increasingly precipitous decline of the once powerful Powhatan Confederacy. Its member tribes eventually left the area entirely, gradually lived among the colonists, or lived on one of the few reservations established in Virginia. Most of these were also subject to an incursion and seizure of land by the ever-expanding European population. In modern times, seven tribes of the original Powhatan Confederacy are recognized in the Commonwealth of Virginia. The Pamunkey and Mattapone still have control of their reservations established in the 17th century, each located between the rivers of the same names within the boundaries of present-day King William County. The Indian Massacre of 1622 took place in the English colony of Virginia, in what now belongs to the United States. On Friday, the 22nd of March 1622, Captain John Smith, though he had not been in Virginia since 1609 and was not a first-hand eyewitness, related in his History of Virginia that Bry's attacks by the Powhatan Confederacy that killed 347 people, a quarter of the English population of Jamestown. Jamestown, founded in 1607, was the site of the first successful English settlement in North America, and was then the capital of the colony of Virginia. Its tobacco economy led to constant expansion and seizure of Powhatan lands, which ultimately provoked a violent reaction. Although Jamestown was spared due to a timely last-minute warning, the Powhatan also attacked and destroyed many smaller settlements along the James River. In addition to killing settlers, the Powhatan burned houses and crops. The English abandoned many of the smaller settlements after the attacks. Background at first, the natives were glad to trade provisions to the colonists for metal tools, but by 1609 the English governor, John Smith, had begun to send in raiding parties to demand food. This earned the colonists a bad reputation among the Native Americans and braves of the Powhatan Confederacy came unarmed into our houses with dare, turkeys, fish, fruits, and other provisions to sell us. The Powhatan grabbed any tools or weapons available and killed all English settlers they found, including men, women and children of all ages. Chief Apishon Senor led a coordinated series of surprises.